Hello, this is Ipo Swords, and today we're going to be talking about this, the 1803 British Flank Infantry Officer's Sabre. If you've read the title, you've probably realised there's something not quite right with the image you see before you. This is not an 1803. This is probably more like a 2017. This is a fake, a reproduction that has been fraudulently and artificially aged in order to appear like an actual antique. Originally, this was a Universal Swords version of the 1803. However, a dishonest seller has attempted to artificially age it in order to pass it off as an actual antique. We'll go into detail about each aspect of this that has been artificially aged, but let it suffice to say that it is not one of these. Pictured here are two originals. There are many, many differences between these two originals, however neither of them match in any way the fakes. There are many variants of the 1803 made by various manufacturers. Some of them had broader blades, some of them had narrower blades, and many of them had different styles of scabbard. Pictured here you can see two distinctly different variants. Getting back to the fake of the day, let's have a look at the way the hilt is designed. You'll note that it uses twisted wire and black leather to compose the actual grip, and that the entire hilt assembly is made of brass. While the use of brass is traditional, the use of black leather is not, and there are many inconsistencies with the originals that can be noted by looking more deeply at this example. Having looked at the fake for a moment, let's compare it directly to the Universal Swords offering. You'll note that this also uses twisted wire and black leather for the grip, and has a cast brass handle. There are many inconsistencies again with the original, however it is identical to the fake. Taking a bit of a closer look, you'll note that there are some divots or depressions in the casting on the face of the lion. This is consistent with the reproduction as pictured here. You'll note that they have them in the exact same position and the exact same depth. Compared to the originals, you can see on the left that there were some that had these depressions, however they are much more subtle. There are also variants, like the one on the right, which had none of them at all. Furthermore on the handle, we can look at the actual cartouche. Pictured on the far left is the Universal Swords reproduction, and on the far right is the faked version. In the middle is an original. Not only will you note that it's almost impossible to read the actual lettering, it's also a much rougher casting. However, the very telltale sign is a presence of these three dots, which does not appear on any originals. Another telling note that can be seen from this angle is the fact that these reproductions use a flat base, rather than the curved and carved brass that is used on the originals. You'll note that the originals look more like vines, whereas the reproduction looks like it's been cut with a cookie cutter. Here you can see all three of them side by side, and you'll note that the shape of the original is very different from both the Universal Swords and the identical but aged fraudulent fake. Another thing to note is the size of the Rakasa. The Rakasa on these swords is much larger than the originals, being a hair over an inch. Compare that to the Universal Swords, which has the exact same geometry, and then the originals. Most of the originals have around a 5mm Rakasa. It's very short, and this is invariable across all of the examples I've found. While we're here, let's talk also about the ferrule. The ferrule is the part of the sword that separates the guard from the grip. It's around one centimeter wide, and on the fake reproductions, and in fact the universal sword reproductions, which are of course the same, you'll note that it has a few grooves in it that form a sort of raised appearance. However, the original, as you can see in this comparative image, has a scooped appearance rather than a positive groove. Again, a difference between the reproductions and the fakes. You can also see a difference here. The originals use shagreen or fish skin, and they used more than a simple braided wire to decorate their grips, whereas the reproductions use a simple black leather 
and use a single twisted wire without any straight wires on either side. Moving on to the scabbards, you can see here the faked version and the reproduction on the left and right respectively, and you'll note that the scabbard shape, or rather the throat, is of the exact same form. They have a few chiseled lines in them that are probably actually incorporated in the casting and then simply refined afterwards. If you compare that to the original, you'll note that it has much closer and much finer lines, and you'll also note that it has a um, cast irregularity. It is asymmetrical. The lower edge is longer than the upper edge, whereas on all of the reproductions, it is symmetrical. Also on the scabbard, you'll see here with the reproduction in Universal Swords copy, you have this very floral decorative uh, retention stud, which is not present in, its, in this pictured form on any of the originals. Moving on to the blade, we can see that it has a rather pointed tip, and you can also see the fact that there is a slight radiusing of the edge. That's because this section of the reproduction is too thick, and thus it has a rather convex grind. You can see it better in this picture from Cult of Athena of the Universal Swords reproduction. If you compare that now to the originals, you see that not only do they have a bit of an upsweep at the tip, they're also much flatter. This is because they are thinner, the appropriate 1 to 2 millimeters thick. Compared side by side, you can see how flat the original is on the left compared to the rather convex surface of the one on the right. That's all we have for today. I hope you appreciate these uh, fake identification videos. I intend to be doing more as I find them. Until next time, this has been Ipo Swords. Stay sharp.